Right, welcome back, everyone. Um, people are just coming in from coffee, but I think most people are here, so we'll, uh, we'll get uh, started. A few people have um, bolted for home because although it's lovely and sunny here, there are reports of snow, apparently, in some parts of the country. Um, so now, uh, next thing is I'm just going to do uh, the um, famous 15-minute um, summary, uh, and then we're going to have a real speaker come up after me to, to finish us off, and then I'm just going to wave you goodbye when we're done. So that's the program now. Um, this um, conference summary came out of a, a terrible accident where uh, when we used to be the ASA conference, I said to Nawin Gupta, someone should do a sort of recap of the two days to remind people what they'd experienced. And he just put me on the program to do it. Uh, and I'm kind of still doing it now. So I'm just going to do a kind of a crazed rattle through what some of the things that were sort of highlights for me um, during the event, mostly focusing on yesterday, actually, because I'm hoping that you mostly remember some of today. Um, but to remind you of some things from yesterday. Um, it's, um, oh, now that's interesting. Um, okay, this is going to be interesting. So uh, one of the things I've been doing is berating the speakers for when they send me a slide deck. They don't embed the fonts in the slide deck when they save it. And I've said, look, your slides look ridiculous because you haven't embedded your, your fonts. And I embedded into this presentation some fonts, at least I thought I had, but actually these are the default fonts. So we'll see how we get on with having failed to follow my own instructions, but it may, it may be a good thing. We'll see how we go. Um, right, so um, here is the summary then. So this is me. We know that. I don't worry about that. Um, this is you um, uh, in the, enjoying the conference. This is me last night trying to think what I was going to say about now. I was lying in my hotel room with a, my head in my hands. But... Um, uh, what I'm uh, going to do is firstly guide you on how you can stop this from ever happening again, um, which is that you do have a feedback form. So if you fill in the feedback form appropriately, you'll find that I'm off the hook and I don't have to do this ever again, which should be a cool thing. Um, conversely, if any of you would like to volunteer to do this next year, I'm willing to consider applications to pick up this little slot. It's very easy and straightforward, and I recommend it. It's a simple job to do this kind of summary. What you just basically have to do is you have to turn the kind of the complexity, this is a slide from a previous year, um, or this is my favorite complexity slide, I just love this one. You just turn this stuff that's gone on for two days now into a nice neat diagram, this goes back 10 years of these conferences, that explains absolutely everything. So I'm sort of trying to do that. And I try to think of a theme rather than just going through each presentation and picking out some highlights. I try and synthesize a, a theme out of these things. And I'm not good at that. I'm one of these people who, um, you know, if you give me your watch, I can take it apart into its component parts and spread it out on a, on a cloth for you and show you all the parts. And then I can tip all the parts into your hat and hand it back to you. Um, and that's kind of, I'm a deconstructor, not a reconstructor, but we'll see how we get on with this. Last year, the, theme, the year before last, the theme was, what does everybody want? And we kind of, we had a demand-led thing. Last year's theme was, ah, and I managed to do 17 slides all beginning with A, so that was kind of fun. What we're going to do this year is, is basically things that seem to be being pulled in opposite directions. There's a kind of tight um, a tug of war thing going on where things seem to be uh, just polarized in some ways. So you've got um, some of the things that Alison was talking about very early on about um, expertise and personal intuition, rational versus anti-rational and that you had some kind of wild statements from various people that you may be able to read from there. Um, I'm going to take a risk now. Um, not many people at a conference like this speak in defense of Michael Gove, um, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, what, what I think Michael was trying to say when he made this idiotic remark was this. He was trying to say people in this country have had enough of economists and their stupid predictions about the economy since we know that economists are always wrong. Um, but uh, is there an economist in the room? Um, but uh, I, I think he said it in a rather too pithy a way, and it got him into terrible trouble. Um, my son is an undergraduate economist, and he assures me that what I say here is absolutely true. Um, so anyway, but there is this kind of rational, anti-rational thing going on. And also, I thought it was very useful, Alison, to point out that this is left, there's not a left-right thing, actually. This is because there is a kind of anti-authoritarian system justifiers, that was a lovely term. And, you know, there are people who think it's kind of okay to scream at your professor at Yale. Um, and equally, there are people who think it's okay to have a sort of hierarchy. This is a very old British meme of 
of I'm better than him and I look down on him and I'm working class and I look up at him and all that. It's from the 60s, I guess. Um, it's okay to be kind of anti-vaccine even though you're not a scientist. Um, it's okay to, uh, to think that your life is, how, is what you deserve, I guess. Um, so there's a sort of tension there between the kind of people who think that the status quo is just fine and the people who think the status quo is some kind of trick. Um, there's a tension between literacy and illiteracy, I guess. Um, this is a kind of bugbear of mine. I live in a little town called Nailsworth, and this is something from the, somebody's post from the Facebook group for Nailsworth. So reading this, I have to say it nearly killed me reading this. Um, <laughs> And so I kind of, I posted, I think I might have to leave this group because I, I just, I, it's, got, it's just so horrible, I can't, I can't begin to deal with it. Um, so, I mean, using language properly is so important. So that's why idiocy and illidiocy are, are an important dichotomy as well. Um, and there's just so much idiocy out there that I'll just, I'll just give you one sample. Um, but this is kind of what, what we're, we're fighting. And, I, it's, and I'm kind of, I don't want to sound sneering, but it's not about just, are you a fool? It's about, are you kind of okay with being a fool or do you want to do something about that? Um, there's a tension between it's complicated and it seems obvious. Like this was one of the, the, the philosophers at the LSE said, oh, it's just obvious. I've never heard a philosopher say that before. Um, that's kind of weird. Um, I, I, saw, I was an undergraduate philosopher, which I could say is much more scientific than doing econ econ econometrics or um, being an economist. Being a philosopher is all scientific. Um, but uh, my, one of my uh, professors said that he was rather put out as a professor of philosophy. He was on a bus and he overheard a couple of old ladies on the bus, one of them was complaining about all her problems, and the other one said, well, dear, you should do what I do. You should be philosophical about it. Just don't think about it. <laughs> I thought, mm. So he was a bit depressed by that. Um, but it is complicated. There are lots of moving parts on what we're trying to do, and, and the transition we're going through with open access and all those things and digital is complicated. Um, and there are people who think that it's just there's a sort of glorious, magical solution out there. You just go, well you know, it'll be fine. If everything was free, it would be great and all that. But actually, you know, even Finch, you know, it is complicated. It is a complicated thing. It's, it's, all, it's confusing versus it's clear, it's defined versus debatable. There are all these kind of things that we think, we, there are terms we bandy around and there was a lot of uh, reaction in Twitter in particular with people going, these terms are not defined, these are not clear. Um, you know, what is truth and all that. Um, so that's a kind of tricky one. And I think some more def definitional work is a useful thing. I've said that on this platform before. Um, so um, definitions versus self-determination. So what is scholarly content? What is a scholarly output? And it was quite interesting to hear that debate on the platform and in Twitter. And there was this idea that scholarly output is scholarly output if you say it's scholarly output, which I'm a little nervous about, to be honest. Um, it's... Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's how you, you declare that to be something is not the same as having a consensus that that is what it is. There was also interesting discussions early on about the tension between um, final and in progress. If you think about it, you know, so sci the scientific record or, the, or even included in humanities, writing the definitive statement, the definitive book, the article, having it printed, it's all about the finalness and the trustworthiness of, the, uh, of that. Uh, but actually, there's also quite a lot of call, and this is important for your career, to have a statement of what you've done. But there was also a lot of discussion about it's a collaborative, living, fluid kind of discussion. It's a community conversation. And those two things seem to be a little bit in conflict, that, that the work of research is about having a community conversation, but the work of scholarly communication is about the, 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 the definition of that. So there's a tension there. Um, you're beginning to think I'm going to come up with some kind of conclusion that resolves this. I'm, I'm really not. That's not, not in the plan at all. Um, so what's next? Um, next is... Oh, I have nothing to say about that other than that articles and data seem to be different publishing solutions. Um, career versus community. There was some interesting discussion about that, that your, your, what's needed for your... Um, career as a researcher to get on and to be successful is not necessarily what your community of researchers need from you and comes back to this thing of are you producing products like articles or are you having conversations and there seems to be a, a painful tension there. What else is there? Easy versus difficult. Um, 
I kind of like that the LSE press operates on one person. Um, and then, or actually the UCL press, because it's been around for a bit longer, operates on six people. And I looked it up, and the o Oxford University press operates on 6,000 people. So I guess there's a tad more complexity going on in there. And it turns out that to be a university press might be an easy thing to start, but a hard thing to finish. Um, so that's a scary statistic for, uh, for Lucy to look at and think, well, crikey, when are we going to be 6,000 people? Important versus sexy. I had a important versus not important, um, but somebody said sexy during their presentation, so I went with it. So this is now officially my favorite journal title, the uh, Journal of Neglected Tropical Diseases, which I think is an excellent title. But it's, it is about you know putting effort into the things that are important and not worrying about the things that are supposedly sexy. So I thought I'd just throw that in for you guys. Uh, open versus closed, well, free versus funded. I mean, this is the perennial debate, and we try and avoid this debate here. We try and avoid the religious political debate and, and focus on the, um, the practical debate. Um, but, you know, these things do rear their head, and I've seen some Twitter debate between Danny and everybody else um, uh, on these subjects. <laughs> But also just some, in, some of the commentary that I've taken these from a couple of slides we've seen in the last couple of days. You know, so my motivation is political and everything should be free and a community resource. I mean, these are the, to some extent, the demands of the community. Outputs versus processes. Are we concerned about the product or are we concerned about how we do it? Are we concerned about the methods? Um, back to this thing of what is a scholarly output. Um, it's the same as art, basically. If you declare it to be art, it is art. If you feel you've been discriminated against, then you have been. I mean, it's kind of self-defining, uh, but there are dangers in that. Um, I kind of like the scooped thing. Do quick and dirty research. Um, do quick and dirty research um, uh, in order to avoid being scooped versus taking the time to do something thoroughly that might get you scooped. I think it's an interesting tension for researchers, and we should explore that some more. Change versus continuity. Everybody, sorry about the typo, everyone thought they were more willing to change than everybody else. I thought that's a lovely idea. And yeah, well, I'm willing to change. Of course I am, absolutely. Nobody else wants to change, but I'm happy to change. Um, it's, there's a terrible saying, a change is as good as a rest, which is nonsense, of course, because everyone hates change and doesn't find it restful. Um, next slide. Science for you, Hammond. I have nothing to say about that. I'm not going to go into that. Gender versus people. There's been a bit of a debate about diversity. There's been a bit of a debate about gender. You know, are we all just people, or do we need to care about these things? Um, I think we've kind of reached peak geezer uh, R2R. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, basically, gray-haired old geezers are limited to uh, me plus one person a day. Um, it's a Paul nodding there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's me. Um, but you've probably seen on the program, that's basically the rule. Um, so we don't have a whole bunch of gray-haired men on the panels, I'm pleased to say. Uh, we are saying no to man panels. And I'm not wishing to be gender divisive. This is quite a, an interesting picture. These are the people who have run workshops and chaired panels and, and been speakers and those kind of things, uh, divided into sheep and goats. Um, but it's, it kind of gives you a sense of, of I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, what next? Yeah, although there was an excellent tweet. Um, Twitter's now, because they're extending the length of a tweet, actually some applications truncate them, and, and Twitter fall rather unfortunately truncated this tweet. I rather like this. I, it's about unfortunate, isn't it? I think it's mentors. I think it was going to go on and say mentors. Although, obviously, mentors is a very sexist term, and we should replace it with something else. But anyway, um, uh, just the truncation of that was just delightful and too, too good to miss. So, uh, almost done. Um, we're going to sweep over that. Librarians v. Publishers. And um, uh, there's a sort of interesting thing. I mean, there always has been. It's always been there's been a librarians v. Publishers thing going on. But I actually, I began to see this this year are kind of coming together with librarians becoming publishers and publishers collaborating with librarians. I'm, I'm kind of seeing... Um, some encouragement in that direction. Um, I'm going to. I'm just. I'm going to ignore this slide because it's going to take too long. But this is this is my giving librarians a hard time slide, so you can read the transition. Um, the, this is the transition of librarians from people who chain books into in, in in libraries to becoming wanting to become publishers, and it's kind of scary idea. Um, but actually, to uh, to kind of paraphrase, uh, you may be familiar with this quotation. 
So my apologies to George Orwell and Animal Farm for that one, if you're familiar with the book, but it, that's a scary concept of, um, and you know, maybe librarians and publishers are starting to become kind of overlapped in the same thing, which it would be no bad thing. So what are we going to do about all this, you're asking me? Um, and I, the answer is I don't know, but I, am, I, I kind of have a sense of progress. I have a sense of uh, we've got some interesting data that, that people are actually paying attention to rather than just uh, kind of belief systems, uh, so that's encouraging. Um, I think we are a community, we're more of a community, and I'd like to think this conference is a key part of that, of pulling together people from disparate backgrounds and getting them to talk to each other. Um, and we're starting to collaborate, and we're starting to cross skill, and, and publishers are learning librarian skills, and librarians are learning publisher skills, and, and all that good stuff. So I think that's encouraging. But to quote, I think from the LSE research, but maybe somebody else, it would take a fair degree of experimentation to get from here to there, and I think we still have to experiment. I think that's going to be the key to this. Um, all of this turbulence, as I always say, is great for conference organizers because people love to come to conferences and try and deal with the turbulence. But I think the experimentation that we're doing right now is, is powerful and going to work well. So that's my summary. Thank you very much.